Friday night. We're going to burn through this. I'm full of um, lots of pent up energy here at the beginning of the year. I have no uh, uh, lavalier microphones. You can you hear me in the back? Yeah. We're okay? Good. So I'm going to use this remote control if I talk from either side so I don't have to be beholden to clicking. Uh, what I have set up here is a look at my practice. Now, while Maria said, you know, superstar, let me put it in the context here. It said, design director and founder of Thirst. Well, there's four of us. Okay, it's not like it's the overnight. Um, I've been in practice, however, on my own since April Fool's Day, 1981. So it's almost 29 years. And uh, before that, I had the privilege of working with a designer who passed this year, or just last year, his name is Bruce Beck, at the design partnership. While I was there in the design partnership, there were uh, three partners in Chicago, or in Evanston, and there were a couple in Chicago. And the one in Chicago who really struck me, his name was Hank Roberts. And uh, Hank was a Michigan Avenue designer. But he seemed to have it all together from my perspective as a, as a young uh, production guy. And uh, I talked to one of the partners. I said, how did you uh, do that? He said, well, he designed his office. And so I think, oh, he designed like the layout of the furniture. And he said, no, he designed his office. What he wanted it to do as a thing, you know, as a component of life. And that was like the big aha moment, the sort of first one. Like, oh, yeah, like you can design your life as a creative person. And uh, certainly anyone who's going to the school is in pursuit of just that, you know, redesigning, uh, perhaps, or rebooting your life. And uh, I've been fortunate because I keep testing different models. And uh, about a decade ago, I, I realized that I was sort of onto a model that felt comfortable. And for me, uh, as a design director of a studio where the work comes through me, I like to sort of say yes a lot. And then I have to have others, you know, sort of make it their life's work too. So that's a kind of motivational moment. And then I have to take it back out, make certain it's sold and invoiced and collected. That's a lot of work. And one time I had 15 people and it was like, I watched the number of people do this and the quality of the work do that. And so that was about 1994. I said, game over. I'm going to you know, redesign the office again. And with that it was, I wanted to keep the quality of life and the quality of the work at a really high level. And that meant that I just had to keep kind of smaller group and then it became a space where I was committed to nurturing young talent. So I would attract people who were out of school, they would stay for anywhere between like four and nine years and then they could do things. So that's sort of the model. Now we keep a, uh, a committed intern in place and every five weeks for 15 years I have been at another school on four different continents to uh, share the work, engage in seminars, workshops, and uh, hopefully give back all the time. Um, the AIJ gave me the medal award, which is the, the high award, and I think they did it for that not to work. But tonight I want to share some of the work, some of the energy, and uh, most of it's fairly recent. I will say that the second slide uh, is an old piece. I'm from the days of like Photoshop 101 when there was no history palette or layers uh, and only one on two. So uh, back then I was, I, was, uh, I was sort of eager to try new things. Had the first Mac in 1985, the little you know, R2D2 Mac on the desk. But in any case, um, it, this week a woman from Barrington Hills called me. Her name was Mary Beth and she said, Hi, I haven't talked to you in a long time. Uh, my son Joe tells me that you're speaking at the portfolio school and uh, uh, he's going to go. Well, she said he has long hair and uh, so I don't know who Joe is here. I think I recognize Joe somewhere in here, but if Joe is here, yeah, great. Not me. <laughs> no, I'm not Joe. <laughs> Are you Joe Wright? No. Okay, well, you can count. In any case, the first slide, the first slide the way I was going to reach out was to show Joe's mom. I have a picture of Joe's mom in, in a poster that I simulated in the neighborhood. So that's where we're going to start. <laughs> I decided I was going to reach out to Joe. And Joe's not here. So let's see. Let's see if this works from the inside of the house. You know, I used to walk around. I look pretty tired right now because it's been a hellish week. But I used to walk around like a raccoon because I'd like go to work. 
And then I go, oh, I hate the job. And then I go home and like, ah, the freelance project. You know, and I'd stay up. That was like way wrong, because I had no life thinking I was making a life, but I had like two portfolios. The one I liked, the one I didn't like. That was not a cool model. So then I started to say, okay, what if I took 50% of the office time and 50% of the professional time and blurred them together, half for research and half for the clients. So that's what I'm going to show you. I want to show you the braid tonight. You know how they weave together, how one informs the other. And I have enough case studies here to show, show you. Like this was just for the hell of it because there was new 3D programs, you know, I sort of in love with Oz Cooper's thing. And I sort of was like enamored with all the the kind of weird iconography <coughs> and Hollywood movie posters. So I made this of the, the women who were in the hood. And uh, it says, this time the game's on home turf. They liked it. Well, actually one of my clients printed it and published it. I thought that's pretty funny. When I moved the office from uh, downtown of 15 people, I moved it to my house in Barrington Hills. And it's like, why would I move 40 miles outside of Chicago? You know, it was like one hell drive. And there, you had to have a lot of land to live there. And so we found this old dairy barn and converted it. It was really wonderful. However, we didn't know too many people. So you got to meet the parents who were the parents of your kids' classmates. It was very freaky, and the freakiest thing was when I brought clients in for the first time into the house, I remember telling the kids, like, today we don't talk. Okay, and the clients are meeting at the dining room table, that was the conference table, it was very weird for me. Um, that was about 19, mid 90s. So then I decided, okay, it was time to sort of use my neighbors to tell my life, and I uh, published a book. Again, one of my clients uh, printed the book for me, and it was called The Good Life, uh, Bliss in the Hills. And this image here, using one of my neighbors, was the day the clients came to visit me for the first time. So I made these little 3D characters. And on uh, this particular day, it was, the, uh, it was me staring into the computer screen while my family was on the other side of the kitchen door having dinner, staring at Dad still working late. Those same tools and uh, experiences of playing with new programs uh, found their way into the Chicago Board of Trade and the report as we have the gilded corn cob and my assistant dressed up as Uncle Sam. So I love to work for them. And we were publishing uh, our own books and we were designing our own typefaces and this was from the first of a series of books called Four Letter Word where we you know, play with writing kind of surreal copy and, and setting type. And this was one of my assistants, Chester, who now runs a uh, type foundry out of New York called Village. And we'd make the collages and write the type. And this And those sorts of experiences then migrate out into the world. And the first people who started to pay attention were the editorial folks. This from Wired Magazine on an invitation for their millennium issue to do a spread on uh, what sex might be like in the year 2025. So this was... <laughs> <laughs> it's the sex club. Uh, just this year, I, I show these. I want to just like take stuff that's on my desk today and put it in front of you. So I want to show you some of my uh, collage work. And then I... Uh, just rented another little uh, loft studio space outside of the uh, studio that we work in so I could teach myself the airbrush. I thought I was going to uh, use the last two years to be like Ricky Analog. So these are some of my, and I have hundreds of these. I haven't mastered the Christie. 